first detailed analysis of the aerodynamics of hypercar series. Today we're going to be looking at the Koenigsegg one-to-one -one. and we're looking at the active aerodynamics on it for this detailed analysis. So we're looking at the rear wing which is a key active element on this car and we're also looking at the front under tray which is also active as well as the suspension configurations. Now this was my favorite of the current hypercars for aerodynamic configuration so I'll explain why that is. Firstly, I like the implementation of the rear wing over the other ones, such as the P1. It's a lighter system of doing it, and I'll go into detail on that. Secondly, it maintains a lot of the active aerodynamic features that the other ones have, but it just sort of strips it down to the bare minimums. So if we look at this rear wing, we can see that it's a top supported wing. Now it's got swan neck mounts essentially, so supporting the top of the wing enables you to drive it harder without separation caused by its mounting points. And I can do a video on this if you want. But you can see that by having this top mount, the airflow is just cleaner underneath. And this mount here can change its angle of attack. It has a push rod in it, okay? So we've got a push rod running through the main axis along there. And by that, they can have the hydraulics and the actuation system really close to the center of the chassis. And when it comes to suspension design and handling, you want your polar moment of inertia, which is basically your resistance to turning to be as small as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to move your masses in as close as possible to the center of your chassis. So by doing that, Koenigsegg's been able to do essentially a handling improvement. My one gripe with this support system is that they don't seem to have streamlined the exits off the back of these structures very well. If we look here, you can see they're actually really thick and I get the feeling that that's not going to be great for drag, but I assume they're doing this for a structural reason. I would still have streamlined it. Now, it's considered that it's got three different settings here. Now, apparently the Koenigsegg system is infinitely adjustable. I don't know, I've seen video of it and it jumps all over the place. But they say they've got the low speed and parking position, which is low angle of attack to reduce drag, the braking setting, which is really high angle of attack, and the high downforce setting, which is an intermediate angle of attack. Now, I'm a bit iffy on some of this because I don't see why the high downforce setting wouldn't be the braking setting. Koenigsegg's claim is, is that even in the braking mode, it's not just acting like an air brake, but the flow is attached and it's making a lot of downforce. I would have thought that if that was the case, why would that not be the high downforce setting for cornering as well? And why would they only open it up to this once the rear tires have reached traction? Because remember, the Koenigsegg is ridiculously powerful. The one-to-one -one can spin its tires up to a ludicrous speed. So surely you want full downforce up to that point. So. I'm not so sold on this. I have a feeling that for this high downforce setting, they've actually had to back it off because they can't get enough front aero. So I think that this might actually be a handling issue. So if they run this setting for braking right, it means that the, the aero balance will be rearward on the car. And that means that when you're braking in a straight line, it's fine. But if you were to turn with it, it would understeer quite a bit. If you back it off, you'll get the car back on point more, but you'll lose ultimate downforce. So that's why I think they've done that for. One of my gripes with this wing is that I consider it too conservative. If you've got an active aerodynamic setup, the whole point of it is that you can run a ludicrous wing. And Koenigsegg hasn't really capitalized on this because they're lacking big end plates or anything like that. Like the end plates are very, very, very small and it's just not making good use of it. Its other disadvantage is that the wing is perpetually in the flow. So that's getting drag, unlike the system on say a P1 where it can retract the wing fully. Obviously the Koenigsegg has the advantage of ridiculous power to pull it out of that hole, but it's just an aerodynamic disadvantage. In saying that, I still think it's superior to the P1 system, but I think they could have gone better, but I have a feeling it's A, aerodynamic balance, and B, aesthetics. Moving on to the adjustability and suspension, Koenigsegg basically has fixed ride height setups. So you can set it for your different positions, like your low drag, high speed, or your um, high downforce. Now, I'm not 100% sure on whether this is adjusted on the fly or it's gotta be done when stationary, but what I do know is that it's all to do with the rake. So we end up with, in the high downforce, we end up with a big rake down, and in the low downforce or the high speed setup, we rake back a bit. And obviously, when you rake back a bit, it's going to lower the angle of attack of all your wing and everything, and it's going to reduce the effective angle of attack of your floor. So you're gonna be making less lift, which means less induced drag. And obviously you've got the inverse and the high downforce setting, which is why you see F1 cars with rake and stuff like that. So as far as that goes, 
good from a steady state point of view. I'm not sure if it can be adjusted on the fly. If it can be adjusted in between turns, then that's a really good system. Finally, just looking at the under tray, this is the dynamic under tray setup on the Koenigsegg. It runs a Venturi setup with a retractable flap. The flap's made out of, um, they call it a hingeless design, which really just means that they just took a piece of carbon and cut it and then used the flex in it. And it's got some cam actuators there that will push it up and down. And they basically, they claim that above 250, they, uh, they drop the flaps so it's not making that big downforce. Now this confuses me somewhat. I assume they've done extensive testing on this, but I would have thought that having the flap up, particularly if it's a flap ahead of the wheel, would help control tire squirt anyway. And by lowering the flap, you're actually blocking off the floor a bit and it won't necessarily make your floor more efficient. I assume that they've worked it out and what they're getting is a very, very slight improvement in drag for a significant loss in downforce. And in particular, front aero grip, because they're not extracting from the front this center of pressure, as we can see in the CFD, there's far more low pressure here when the flap is up than here when the flap is down. So this is definitely resulting in an aero balance shift rearward, which you know may be combined with the fact that for the high downforce setting, they lower off the angle of attack of the rear wing. So this may not actually be a drag reduction so much as an aero balancing to compensate for the fact that you're trying to run your wing at a lower angle of attack to drop the drag. So you drop the downforce on the rear wing and then you have to consequently drop the downforce on the front or otherwise you'll end up with a car with a really forward center of pressure and that will be an unstable car. If the center of pressure moves forward to the center of gravity, your car is unstable aerodynamically. Okay, that's the one-to-one -one analyze. Thanks for watching and check out the other videos.